sure. Yes, we are now live with Lena. Uh, sorry to people who have been waiting for the for the delay, but we're it's here now. It's all his fault. It's fault. Yes, it's all my fault. You can you can blame me. And, um, Lena, um, first first question. We'll kick things right off. I was I spoke to Nikolai last season uh, from from Game of Thrones. We talked about the ebbs and flows of, of the show. How that some seasons characters have a lot to do, some seasons don't have much to do because of the nature of the story and how it progresses. And I think this is um, shaping up to be a big season for your character. Uh, one of your sons has been killed, your brother's returned, um, your other brother's on trial uh, for the murder of your son. Uh, it just seems like everything's coming to a head for, for your character. You're in the center of it all. Um, how are you feeling this season shaping up for your character and uh, what, what's it sort of like? Well, um, it's definitely, you know, an interesting uh, de developmental season for Cersei, the one that we're watching now. But really and truly, um, this is just kind of the ladder up to where she's going to fall pretty severely around somewhere, you know, in season six. <laughs> Five. Six? Five. Um, yes. But, you know, she's hugely unprepared for where she is right now, and because Cersei, you know, whether she truly believes it or not, I'm still not sure that she is um, unbreakable. She's about to find out that she isn't as invincible as she believes. Because the Lannisters have really been sitting pretty at the at the sort of top of the game, pretty comfortable as comfortable as one can be in this show. Um, and we're now starting to see things are uh, completely unravel. Uh, and a couple of weeks ago, we saw a big, a big sort of um, a moment in the death of Joffrey. Um, from the show, and I, I know I, I'm someone who hasn't read the books. I was pretty shocked to see him taken out in that way at that time. I sort of was sort of getting comfortable with episode nine being the episode where uh, things happened on Game of Thrones. I sort of had it all figured out, but no. Um, <laughs> how, how, how do you think? How do you think Cersei, uh, Cersei dealt with um, dealt with the death of Joffrey and how that's affected her moving forward? Um. Well, it, it's no, it's only a spoiler, I guess, you know, if you haven't read the books, but when Cersei was young, she, um, she was told that she would outlive her children. Yeah. Um, and so she's kind of lived with this paranoia, you know, she covers her paranoia with, with um, you know, her lust for power and this kind of self-ingrained belief um, that's built on shaky ground and so I, the death of Joffrey for sure is a very very big piece of her strength and her foundation. I mean she said last season you know if it wasn't for my children I'd have thrown myself out of the window and there's more truth to that than anything she's ever spoken before. Um, so she definitely lost a big chunk of her sanity by losing him. Mm. And uh, it, it, it's pretty interesting because um, like she's so cold to so many people on the show, but she had so much love for her children, so much love for, for Joffrey, someone that the audience is so cold to. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I, I guess... My son is nothing like Joffrey, thank God. Um, but I do understand, you know, the power of a mother's love. It is, you know, it's undeniable and it's intrinsic and, you know, in, in your fibre once this event happens in your life. And, you know, also she's had nothing of her own. This is something of her. She also talks about that earlier on, about how... It was, her, you know, Joffrey was at the very least her. She knew he was a monster, but he was her monster. And um, not that she thinks of her children as possessions, but there's a purity 
in her relationship with them that she doesn't have with anybody else. You know, we're, we're only we're only a couple uh, episodes since the death of Joffrey, but I'm already missing the guy. With uh, mm -hmm. uh, you could always you could always uh, rely on him to say the douchiest thing possible at any moment. Like it was just so sort of there's something so in, not enjoyable, but something so energetic about watching Joffrey just be so unashamedly inappropriate at every moment and just always yeah. outdo himself. <laughs> He, I mean, Jack is, you know, we've loved watching him um, for the last, you know, three and a bit years, and he's brilliant, as we know, and he's going to be missed greatly on the show and greatly, you know, when we will miss him hanging out, but, um, you know, I think there'll be, there'll be more douchebaggery to come, I'm sure. <laughs> Yeah, there's always a few douchebags on Game of Thrones. Yeah. Um, now, there's there was a massive um, scene that got a lot of talk last, uh, not last night, but last week on Game of Thrones um, yeah. involving you and your brother. I guess King Joffrey uh, was was around. His cold well, body was innocent around. Innocent bystander for the first time ever. Yes. <laughs> the one time he's not the one causing the mischief. Yeah. Um, and... Look, um, I just I just wanted to ask for that scene with uh, with Nikolai. What was your reaction to that scene um, when you got it? I've read online that you had mixed feelings about that scene. Um, whether that's true or not, I guess you can clear up for us. Um, mm -hmm. how, how did you find? How what was your reaction to that scene? Um, I think you know. I don't know if I describe it as, as mixed feelings. That sounds kind of uh, a bit blasé, but <laughs> I. Uh, you know, it's, it's it's very important to me, and I, I love Cersei, and I, you know, David and Dan write beautifully for us, and Brian, and um, that's my phone. Should I answer that or hang up? It's going to um, keep ringing. Well, Should I go and turn it off? I don't want to tell you what to do, Lena. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's going to keep ringing. Should I turn it off? Yeah, probably turn it off. I don't know, like unless it's a really important call. <laughs> yeah. Um, just uh, for those watching, um, in case you don't know the scene I was just talking about. Oh, you you're back. You're back, Lena. I just I just I'm filling trying, the I'm time. Fine. I've returned. Okay. Um, back. Yes. So you know, we spent a long time rehearsing it with Alex, the director, and and myself and Nick. And Jack, and um, you know, of course, it's a very uh, complicated moment for many reasons. And what I will say about it is, from my 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 stance as an actor who's had this character for three years, four years, who knows her intimately, you know, you're standing as a woman in absolute grief in pain that she's never felt before. Um, and, you know, she's staring at the body of her dead son, who's been her sanity and her purpose. Um, and she's joined by her brother, who's also her lover. So, you know, we've also got bigger problems going on than the ones everyone's talking about. Uh, and it becomes very messy, and there's lust and, and desperation, and you know a need to feel something other than this searing, empty loss. Um, and so that's where I came from when we were filming. There was this need, and it was it wasn't right, and yet it felt great, and yet it wasn't right, and um, and. Uh, it played out the way it did, and I was I was really happy with it. I thought it was um, it, my intention was there, and I think people's reactions are right, and opinions, you know, are varying. Yeah, like I, I like I heard I had, I've read and heard sort of two opinions sort of about this scene. Um, some people say, well, in the book it was a clearly consensual scene, and they've they've gone off from what the book said. Um, other others have been um, 
covers have been. No, it's sort of ended up being consensual in the show as well. Do, do, you, do you have an opinion on that, whether this was a consensual act or not? Uh, it's, this is a really tricky one because, um, you know, either way, anything I say I'm going to get slaughtered for. Yes. Uh, how did you how did you play it as an actress approaching it? How, well, how did... saying, I, I came from this place of grieving mm. and a need to feel connected and alive and you know this is the only other person or probably the only person she has ever trusted in the world. Uh, and she's shunned Jamie, and he's never stopped loving her. And in that moment, she's embracing and she's rejecting of him in the same breath. And uh, you know, if I had not have said "not now, not here," you know, if there was silence, I I don't know how people would have reacted. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. But I can't, it's it's tricky, man, because we could go into this for a long time. I could get personal. Yeah. We could, you know what I mean? It's a real yeah. fucker of a of a situation. And I also think, you know, without being too much of a twat about it, you're talking about a show with dragons, incest, babies taken by zombies. You know. Um, okay. Yeah. Do um do do you, do you think it was the right direction for the show to take with that scene? Do you think it was done? Yes, I do. I stand yeah. by it, absolutely. And I think there's that, it, you know, it's an interesting turning point for Jamie's character, mm. massively, because we've kind of despised him. You know, he killed a fucking child while yeah. shagging his sister. And then we fell in love with him again. And now yeah. this, uh, you know, greatly divided scene has happened and it's it's yeah. getting people talking and, and um, bringing up you know important uh, important conversations <laughs> and then and then and then last night again Jamie stand up guy giving people swords and uh, yeah. <laughs> helping out Tyrion and yeah got, went straight back to being good guy Jamie um now <laughs> A great thing with you know he's a human he makes mistakes. <laughs> yeah, we've got um uh, yeah and uh, I spoke to Nikolai last year and he said he thought Cersei was bad for uh for Jamie. Um, yeah. do you think Jamie's bad for Cersei? I'll give you a chance to <laughs> to have it give Cersei's side of the story. Um no, I think he's probably, I think he'd be great for her if she could get past herself. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? If she could accept his love, because I think it's pretty from his side, I think they'd be great. Um, which is crazy, but uh, true. And I, I, <laughs> she's just also he's returned without a hand, and she is a seeker of perfection. Or let's say she's you know she's frightened of flaws and doesn't want anything broken. Uh, she doesn't want to have to fix anybody or take care of anybody. Um, so that shows you how shallow she is in terms of his return, you know. But she also needs him. She she needs Jamie, so she'll continue to manipulate him on many levels. Now, um, uh, now, Lena, we're um we're gonna wrap things up uh, pretty pretty much now. But we've got a couple questions in uh in uh, that have been sent through to us. So we might sort of lightning round them. Just try to. Just try to uh, speed through them. So quick answers Are you here. Me to hurry up. <laughs> Sorry. Are you telling what? me to hurry up? I'm not telling you hurry up. I, I know you're a very busy person, Lena, and um, I want to make sure you. <laughs> you're like just answer that quickly. Yeah, I just uh, hey, if you if you want to spend another twenty minutes talking, you're more than welcome. Um, have you lost me? Yeah. Oh no, you're back. Okay, good. Um, Brian Marsh asks, who are you rooting to win the Game of Thrones? Um, 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 I'd love to see Sam on the throne. I think it'd be wicked. Sam? Oh, I. I think it'd be, be, a, lot of, be a lot of whinging from the throne. 
feel like. I don't know. I think he'd be fat and happy and get all the food and beer he wants. He might be really jolly. Yeah, I guess so. North of the Wall does not lend itself to to being happy. I guess. No, North of the Wall is not a party. Yeah. Um, this is from Alessandro Martins. Hello, Lena. Cersei is my favourite Game of Thrones character. I love the way she looks so strong and at the same time so fragile. Congratulations, I'm a huge fan. Oh, no question there. It's okay. Um, and um, we've got um, oh, there's another question um, about who you're rooting for. Um, so yeah, there, there's a couple of que- there's a couple of comments uh, from the chat room and things like that. Let me just check oh, the other oh, chat room oh, that we've got. Sorry, I'd love yeah. to. See. What, sorry? I'd love to see Arya on the throne. Arya. Oh, she's great. She, she's my yeah. favourite star. Yeah, she's fantastic. Maisie's amazing. Maisie's amazing. I just coined it. What, and, 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 and quick couple of questions. Do you, um, what's it like? You're definitely in the most fun part of Game of Thrones in King's Landing. There's all the machinations and pol- political movements and things like that. Um, is, is there an, I guess... What's it like sort of being in that sort of fun zone? And is there any actor that's sort of far away from you that you'd love to get a chance to have some scenes with? Um, I, can't, I can't think of anybody offhand because I've loved, you know, working with Pete and Nick and Gwen and Finn and, and Jack and um, I've loved every minute and, and, you know, it does. We all get a chance to work with different people because this you know this land keeps shifting people keep leaving because they don't want to die so uh, I'm looking forward to some new you know sparring partners it's like tag team <laughs> yeah yeah let, let, let's be honest you guys have the fun set right yeah it's you know I mean we're not freezing our balls off up north that's for sure yeah yeah um, and and I, lastly, I, I usually ask people when I speak to them from Game of Thrones, is, do you think Cersei's a good player of the game or or not? I think she could be better, but, you know, she's doing what, she's doing what she can. She's doing what she can. And uh, as I say, she's not... She's not great at asking for help, trusting people. So she's pretty much a loner. So in that way, yeah, she could be, you know, if she was a team player, she'd do better, I think. That's uh, yeah, that that's interesting. And um, do you uh, you are not you will be um submitted for the supporting actress in a drama series race uh for for Game of Thrones this season. Um, you've uh, had already some great material with uh with obviously the uh, in quote comes rape uh, scene with Jamie, uh, whether it was that or not, I guess people can make up their own minds. Um, and um, with the death of Joffrey, do you th- uh, do you have more stuff coming that's good, or do you think if you had to submit an episode for the Emmys, it's going to be something that we've already seen? Um, I don't know. That's weird. It makes me slightly feel weird. Um, I don't know. I guess it's up to whoever does that. I don't really know. I mean, she, you know, I feel like I always have great material. Whether or not I do it justice, I guess, is uh, of, you know, of uh, public opinion. But it's uh, there's more to come for sure. Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> well, good luck, Lena. So much with the Emmys, with Game of Thrones. It's um, it's going all, it's all going uh, so well for you guys at the moment, and um. I can't, can't can't wait to see how it all pans out and how Game of Thrones continues to go on its uh, climb up the Emmy ladder of chaos. <laughs> sure. Thank you for talking. No worries, Lena. And thanks for putting up my technical issues and uh, thanks yeah. everyone for watching for putting up my technical issues. You made it happen. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we got it done. It's, <laughs> it's been a success um, eventually. Uh, thanks, thanks, Lena. Have a good, have a good one. Bye.